Hi. Welcome to Simple Economics with Tanvir Hashmi. The purpose of these videos is to address the complex topic which uh, economics students find it hard to grasp. Um, in this video, we are going to see how consumer and producer surpluses could be calculated for the two complex cases of indirect tax and a subsidy. But before we go deeper into the topic and I show you the, the diagrams of uh, consumer and producer surpluses, um, I just want to uh, spend some time on explaining what is the consumer and producer surplus. The textbook definition of consumer surplus is the difference between the price a consumer is willing to pay and what actually he pays in the market, while producer surplus is uh, the difference of the price he's willing to sell at and the market price. Um, in, in other words, actually, uh, consumer surplus is just a satisfaction which consumer derive by buying a product at lower price than what actually he could have paid. My favorite example of consumer and producer surplus is a flea market where buyers and sellers they bargain with each other before they commence the trade. Um, while a seller might charge the highest possible price from a consumer, um, knowing the fact that it is a word of imperfect information, um, so some consumers do not have the idea about the price uh, of the product they are buying, um, and some other consumers uh, might bargain to the lowest possible price a producer or supplier is willing to sell their product at. So, by starting at the highest price a seller in a flea market want to extract the maximum out of the consumer by taking um, his or her surplus, while some other consumers who are a frequent visitor of this kind of market knows that um, the prices are not fixed and they could actually bargain to lower the price and that's how they can lower the part of producer surplus. Um, shortly I'm going to show you how the indirect taxes uh, has influence or how the indirect taxes uh, impact consumer and producer surplus. Stay with me. First, we are going to look at indirect tax and how it changes consumer and producer surpluses. There are uh, many examples of indirect taxes like VAT, excise duty and tariff. Um, I'm not going to use VAT because VAT is 100% passed on to consumer. Um, I'm not considering a perfectly inelastic demand curve. Um, just to make things simple, I'm just going to draw a downward sloping demand curve. And maybe um, it's an example of an excise duty which could be shared between consumer and producer. So um, a typical demand supply diagram is something what we need and I hope you all understand um, how demand and supply works. So I assume that um, you understand the, the, the theory behind law of demand and law of supply. Based on that, you draw simple graph of demand and supply. So if you have noticed that I have drawn demand and supply starting from the vertical axis um, because I want to show you what consumer and producer surplus is in um, casual demand and supply diagrams you don't need to uh, start it from the vertical axis but in this case it's better to show it through the vertical axis and of course price let's take in dollar and quantity you could give a title to this uh, market this is the equilibrium price PE and this is equilibrium quantity QE. Here is where the demand starts. So this is the willingness of the, of the consumer to pay for this product and this is the willingness of the producer to sell at. 
but the market price is PE. So this is your consumer surplus and this is your producer surplus. So it is really easy to see the consumer and producer surplus in this simple diagram. In the point where demand intersect the vertical axis. So let me call it a price of 10. Equilibrium price six and the point where supply curve intersect the vertical axis um, let we call it price four Let's assume uh, uh, an indirect tax of two dollar which causes the supply curve to shift um, upward to the left And this is, um, maybe I have to redraw this as I want to show you an impact of specific tax, not the ad valorem tax. So specific tax will cause a parallel shift in supply curve. Some adjustment needed now. Um, so after the increase in tax, the new price is going to be, let's say, $7. And this vertical difference, this vertical difference between the two supply curve A and B is the amount of tax per unit. As you could see that there is a bigger gap between the two curves than what is shown here between price of six and seven. So this means not all of the tax is passed on to the consumer. Um, in order to find the consumer and producer surplus, because that is our topic uh, for the time being, I thought that I'm teaching the impact of taxes. Um, so I'm going to erase this consumer surplus and producer surplus here because this was the, the surpluses before the tax was imposed. So as you can see the equilibrium price um, after the tax is seven. So consumer surplus is reduced to this triangle. Mathematically, you can find this triangle and I think in IB high level economics, they need to find um, the area of this triangle after or before the change in tax which is going to be one over two time uh, base time height. And let me give some number here. This is 100 and this is 90. So um, you can find the area here. Um, base is 90 time three, right? So it's going to be 45, 45 time three, is 135 of course in dollar now it's not that easy to find the producer surplus after the tax um, if the supply is shifting to the left for reasons other than indirect tax then it is easier because then the new surplus will be this area if it is not the indirect tax since this is the case of indirect tax and you find the producer surplus at the price which producer actually gets not really the market price because uh, when there's indirect tax there's a difference between the price what producer gets and what actually the market price is in this case because a b is this vertical difference is the tax which goes to the government so the producer price is going to be let me take it um, five. Actually, it should be five because I said the indirect tax of uh, $2 is imposed. So the producer price actually here is five, not seven. Consumer pays seven, but producer gets five. And this is the reason that um, producer surplus is not the area I have shown you earlier, um, which was this area. The area actually is the price what producer get and what he's willing to sell at. So this is the area of producer surplus after the tax, which means if you need to find it mathematically, that's going to be um, half time uh, 90 time one. So that's going to be 45. 
and the rest of the area this this whole uh, rectangle is actually the government revenue in order to actually find the change in consumer and producer surplus you should um, use different colors because it's not easy for you to understand and I also have limited colors here um, so you, you need to find the change in producer surplus which is going to be this whole area which is a trapezium and you know how to find the area for trapezium um, in terms of consumer surplus the area um, is going to be this one and here is a technical thing as you could see the loss of consumer and producer surplus is bigger than the gain of revenue by the government as you could see this this area is the gain of of, of the government in the form of tax revenue while the loss of consumer surplus is once again this trapezium just follow the movement on my hand um, and the loss of producer surplus is this trapezium right so you could see this extra loss here which is gained by no one this small triangle this together um, is dead weight welfare loss the upper small triangle is the loss from consumer surplus gained by nobody and the lower uh, triangle is the loss from producer surplus gained by no one so we call it dead weight welfare loss as this area is not redistributed to any of the stakeholder so i hope that you understand this uh, slightly complex diagram you need to practice this practice this diagram maybe two three times to master it um, in the next video i will show you the impact of subsidies stay with me